My name is Warrington Hudlin. I'm the president of BFF. I'm also a member of the Board of Trustees here at the Museum of Moving Image, and I welcome you all to this celebration of the 20th anniversary of the new wave of black cinema. <laughs> I want to begin by thanking our sponsor, NBC Universal, who, whose general support made this event possible. 1991 was an amazing year, as, as, our, as our keynote uh, speaker was talking about. In fact, before that year, in the 70s, when black cinema first started, I was a young filmmaker trying to figure out how could I find someone to bang the drum, raise, raise awareness. At that time, there was only one person writing for a publication who could possibly give us some shine. That person's name was Nelson George. And he worked way at the top of a long flight of steps. Anybody old school remembers the Amsterdam News? It was like I, you had to climb, was climb a mountain to get to the top of the steps. And I got to up there, I said, Nelson, uh, excuse me, my name is Warrington Hudlin. I'm, I'm a filmmaker, and, and we, we really are coming out with these films. I'd like for you to write about it. And this brother, from way back in the day, immediately reported for duty. And since then, Nelson George has been the constant and enlightened voice for raising awareness of black cinema. Nelson George is a true Renaissance man, and if we need anybody to look back and tell us what it means, and to start this discussion, it's Nelson George. Please welcome Nelson George. One of the other things that we're here to celebrate 20 years ago was the emergence of black film, this new wave of black films. Uh, a huge number of films, 19 films were announced to be released that year. Not, 19 films didn't come out that year, but they were announced. These films generated an incredible amount of media coverage. Um, the New York Times is this famous feature story with pictures of Spike, Raging Warrington, Charles Lane, Maddie Rich, and Maravan Peoples on the cover. Wesley Snipes and Annabella Sciorra won the cover of Newsweek for Jungle Fever. Um, everyone did trend stories, Time Magazine, Ebony Magazine. This black film thing was a huge media story that year. Um, within the industry, you could say that really She's Gotta Have It in 86 was the, sort of the, the first shot across the bow. House Party, which did very, very well a year later, uh, School Days. It seemed like we were building toward this year, uh, this year of all these black films, and, and it really came to fruition in 91. This wave that we're talking about rolled on, I would say for another about five years, maybe around 96, 97, it begins to trickle off to the trickle that we have now. The truth was there was a disconnect between, often between what we expected audience to go see and what they did go see. And a lot of what happened later on is that the, the urban film aesthetic, if you will, became to overwhelm uh, and, and we got less, fewer and fewer of the middle class things. Uh, there's a couple of movies that got made during that era by people who were not very experienced. We stumbled our way through filmmaking because the doors were open and we learned as we went along. Um, I look back on uh, some of these films now and go, wow, th you, know, you can tell that these things were cobbled together by people just learning to craft. The problem was, with few exceptions, most of the filmmakers did not get to make enough films to become really good filmmakers. But one of the guys who did, so live is Spike, John Singleton. John, can you hear me? Yeah. How, you doing? How you doing, man? Good. You're in Queens? You were in uh, Long Island City, actually. No, Astoria, Long Island brother. Island. Astoria. Okay. Oh, Astoria, sorry. So, John, yeah. 1991, year yeah. uh, you made Boys in the Hood. You actually made Boys in the 90. 90, and fall of 90, yes. Uh, a lot of it, what is the number one memory 20 years later? What, what, what comes to mind when I say Boys in the Hood to you? Um, just really my start, uh, me figuring out how to actually make movies and how to, how to be a filmmaker. I, I just cut the tail end of what you were saying about, about filmmakers uh, at that time really just cobbling it together and trying to figure out how to do it. And for me, it, 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 that's what it was. It was like uh, me trying to realize my actual dream of wanting to be a filmmaker when everybody in the, in the world was telling me I'd never do it. Now, the reaction, the film was incredibly successful. Um, you, got, you got an Oscar nomination. I think you're the youngest director, I believe, to get an Oscar nomination. Um, yes. In the industry, how did you, how did you feel the industry treated you and, and received? Because you were in a special time, special place. Were you embraced, or did you feel that there was still some wariness? 
I was. I, I think I was very much embraced. I think uh, I was. Uh, I was lauded and um, and put up on a pedestal to a certain degree, and a lot of it was uh, analogous to to you know. I always I always joke around with Spike is like you know they made me to spite you because they, you know he was he was just in everybody's ass like telling everybody <laughs> the truth what what needed to be said in terms about hiring practices in this business about um, about just anything in terms of black people within the general pop culture you know being a filmmaker gave him a um, kind of a soapbox to to speak on different things that a lot of people would not speak on. And, you know, I like everything that he said, said during that times and even now and everything, you know, we support, we like one, two punch in terms of what is right and what is wrong in this business in terms of um, the way that it treats black talent in general, not necessarily black filmmakers, but black talent in general. So I want to, um, we have a, only a few more minutes. I want to talk, you've done a lot of TV, you've done uh, feature films uh, since Red of Brooklyn. Looking now, twenty. Where do you see the, the 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 atmosphere, the landscape for black filmmakers now, black talent now in two thousand eleven? Well, I think that if we now we live in an, uh, a medium where you know you have all of these different uh, you know from Facebook to Twitter, you have access to your fans, you have access to people who can help you uh, make films. I think that the climate of African American films, we need to make our new releases like an event like when strata brooklyn came out boys in the hood new jack city came out these movies were like events and yeah. what i mean by that is that people came out in droves because they were excited to see us on the, the screen and now it's not like that anymore because there's so many different ways of distri distributing projects you know if it's from mobile to you know whatever have you, uh, it's, it's not as simple as going to the theaters and going straight to DVD now. So I, I think that we could, if we use the new technology that we all have embraced, embraced to uh, promote and market our films and for us to get back into the theaters, because that's what, you know, the bottom line is for Hollywood is the amount of numbers that African-American movies does in that first and, and second week window. 